Hey Craig! I had a great time playing board games last night. Uh, which reminds me, I've recently completed a top secret side project, a web app to track each player's performance and win rates over time. You know, for bragging rights. Ooh, bragging rights. I love bragging. Uh, but say, what did you use to build this web app? So lately I've been using Django for my web app's backends, uh, but deploying Django isn't always easy. Martin, when I say, I feel you on that. But luckily, I've been working on a Terraform script to automate the entire process on GCP. Want to test it out on your project? Yeah, that would be amazing. Show me the way. I've been using and deploying Django for over a decade. And honestly, it's tricky every time. <laughs> that makes me feel better to hear you say that. Uh, there are a lot of tedious parts to get right. Yeah, there sure are. Uh, you need a database, a web server that ideally scales, storage for static files and media, and encrypted application secrets. It's not easy to get all that right. Now, Cloud Run is serverless, so it can handle the scaling part, but the rest are still a challenge. And your script handles all of that, uh, including application secrets? Uh, how is that even possible? It's possible by the magic of, we'll probably have to make a few edits to your settings.py file. But I've been using it on my own web apps for a bit now. Here, let me run it real quick uh, to redeploy my application, and then we can integrate it into your project. That sounds great. Uh, oh, look, there it goes. Wow, you and I just stood here like bumps on a log while the script did everything. I know, wasn't it great? Uh, I'll send you the link to the repository, and after you clone it, we can walk through it. OK, uh, I have the code up. Uh, I've seen a little Terraform before, but I'm not an expert. Uh, what am I looking at here? Terraform is an open source infrastructure as code tool that allows for consistent declarative workflows to manage large scale application infrastructure. That's a bit of a mouthful, but in short, it just means you get to write down what servers your application needs and how they should connect to each other, and Terraform figures out how to make that a reality. And it knows how to talk with Google Cloud? It sure does. Looking up at the top of the file, the first block specifies a dependency on the Google Cloud platform bindings. So with that, Terraform downloads the necessary code to translate everything that we write here into Google Cloud API calls. Wow. OK, I'm hooked. Uh, can you walk me through this file? Yeah, so the next step, make environment variables locally accessible to your Terraform workflow. You can hard code anything that's fixed via default values and then leave the rest be passed in from the command line. OK, uh, that makes sense. And what does the script do next? If you've ever configured a new GCP project by hand in the web console, you've encountered the process of activating specific service APIs. So this next part looks ahead at the complete set of service APIs it will require and turns them all on. We'll also want to set up a custom service account to run our cloud run service. The default service account has access to do a lot of things, so I usually create my own service account and specifically set what it can and cannot do. Uh, I love that this script even captures the principle of least privilege. Always. Now, the next step takes some time to complete the first time you run this configuration, because it initializes an entire Cloud SQL Postgres instance. This section looks like it does a lot of heavy lifting. Um, I see the creation of a Cloud SQL instance, uh, let's see, a user, and a specific password. Uh, but how do we get that password into our code? Uh, hold on to that thought, because it is coming soon. But first, there's a section that sets up the final project-specific values that we have, our admin user's password, and a Google Cloud storage bucket to host our static and media files. Oh, neat. Uh, I like that Terraform generates these secrets, so they never exist in plain text. Yeah, exactly. And now that Terraform has generated everything sensitive, we can prepare to securely get all of that information into our Django settings. OK, that one is a little dense. Uh, can you walk me through it, Craig? Absolutely. This block uses a simple template, which I'll send you, uh, to create an environment variable file with our database credentials, secret key, and storage bucket. Later, we'll make an edit to your settings.py file to actually read in those values. Perfect, uh, because I have flagged some to-dos in my settings file for each of those things. Uh, what's next here? 
So far, we've generated values for a few sensitive pieces of our app, but Terraform has yet to actually share that information with anyone. So this part creates a new entry in Secret Manager and gives access to the necessary service accounts. I see this creating new secrets, uh, but have our secret values been uploaded to Secret Manager yet? Ah, yes, good eye. If our Terraform manifest ended here, we would in fact have some empty and pretty useless entries in Secret Manager. But that's where this next part comes in to gather up all of the values we care about and populate those secrets. Ah, and I'm guessing that our Django app will then need to access these secrets during startup? You're really quite a good guesser, Martin. Has anyone ever told you that? Ah, oh, shucks. So this is where that template file comes in, because the structure of the secrets we uploaded isn't just the values awkwardly placed in a text file, but instead a valid environment variables file that our application can source, thus allowing your Django code to pull those values right out of the environment. Wow, Terraform's thought of everything. Uh, and now we're getting to the Cloud Run service definition. Indeed, it's taken a lot to get here, but the Terraform manifest is now finally ready to define our actual Cloud Run service. I also see another IAM setting there. Yeah, there's always more IAM settings. <laughs> in the Google Cloud Console, there's a checkbox that says, make this service public. In the gcloud CLI, it's the dash dash allow dash unauthenticated flag. In short, uh, these two just open up our service to the entire internet, which is, of course, what we want. And speaking of policy, it uh, looks like you're also setting service permissions. and is that a for loop? Yeah, it is. Terraform allows you to perform actions against a list of values. In this case, we're giving both Cloud Build and our actual Django service account access to Cloud Run and to Cloud SQL. But why does Cloud Build need access to the database? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, as most Django developers know, some of your deployments uh, involve schema migrations that must be applied running manage.py migrate. The only problem is Cloud Run has nowhere to run that sort of one-off command. So to solve this, I've set up a series of steps in the cloud build migrate.yaml script to run against our container image. One of these is the famous migrate command, and thus cloud build will also require access to the database. Ah, so is that your continuous delivery configuration? Yeah, it is. Uh, and you can run this manually or as part of a deployment to automatically run the steps that you need to migrate your application or any other commands that you need. All right. Uh, there's one last part of the Terraform script that we haven't covered. Uh, these output parts here, uh, what are they? Those are values that Terraform will display once it's finished applying everything. And these are the useful values that we need, our service URL and our super user password. Of course, we've defined our password as being sensitive, so it will only output that if we explicitly ask for it. We could get those values by running gcloud commands against Cloud Run and Secret Manager, but this saves some time. Wow, this is all so declarative. Yeah, that's the point. Terraform allows you to capture your entire deployment process in one declarative manifest, and it handles the rest. Now, all that mumbo jumbo about consistent declarative infrastructure really makes sense. So with all this, uh, I can go edit my settings.py file now. Sure can. Open up that file, and we'll get started editing. OK. I'm in my settings.py file, and I'm ready to grab my passwords from Secret Manager. Great. I'm sending you a snippet now, which you can drop in at the top of your file pretty much as is. Ooh, uh, this is hefty. Uh, let's see. Uh, that read env function will read from a local environment, uh, plus a dot env file if I have one. Uh, but then we get to this try block. Uh, let's see. Uh, we attempt to use the Google Auth API to load our default credentials in production. I know these are provided by Cloud Run itself. Uh, if they're missing, we must be doing local development, so it quietly fails. Yep, you're on the right track. This setup handles both production and local development, which is nice. Ah, uh, and then uh, if it sees we have a project ID, uh, we use the Secret Manager API to get those very same secrets we saved in Terraform manifest. And then with those values, it loads them into the environment as well? Yeah, precisely. And instead of accessing those variables via os.environ, like you might be used to, I do recommend using the environ library to streamline the process. This sounds amazing. Uh, let me quickly edit my settings.py file in the other locations uh, to read in all of our secret values. 
Uh, first I'll update my secret key. Then I'll let the environment package handle all of my database settings. And lastly, I'll read in the correct static files bucket. Okay, so uh, Craig, you're telling me that if I run this script now, it will deploy my app. This task that I usually spend an entire day suffering through will be just done. Almost. Open up that README and you'll see a few extra commands that we have to run the first time we deploy our project. Okay, uh, opening it now. All right, I'm setting the project ID variable and activating it with the gcloud CLI. Uh, I'm already authenticated with my project. Uh, otherwise, I would need to run gcloud auth application default login. Enabling a few base services, I see. I imagine this simplified the Terraform manifest in some way. Uh, next up is gcloud builds submit. Uh, I know this one. It actually reads my Docker file and uploads the resulting image to Google Container Registry. Oh, and here we go. Uh, Terraform init and Terraform apply. Whoa, look at it go. Things are moving pretty fast. Except, oh, yeah, you said the database would take a while to initialize. Yeah, and while that's working, want to see something neat? Open up this project in the Google Cloud Console, and you'll see this database initializing exactly as if you'd just gone through the Create Cloud SQL Instance Wizard. Oh, right. Look at that database being created. Uh, like you said, this can take a while. Uh, see you back here in five minutes. Sounds good. All right. Uh, the Terraform script finished successfully. And look, uh, just like you said, it's printed my Cloud Run Services URL. Uh, but first, I have one more first deployment command to run. Yep, but you'll actually run this command anytime you deploy a change that alters your static files or your database schema. Ah, uh, and now uh, the last step, we output the URL and check that it worked. Uh -huh. Oh my gosh, I can hardly believe it. <laughs> Pretty neat, eh? Yeah. And now let me show you something else cool. Run Terraform Apply again. Uh, but Craig, I don't need two instances of my app deployed. No, of course not. But trust me, run the command again and see what happens. Well, you've never led me wrong before. So here we go. See, it detected that everything you declared already exists, so the whole process did nothing. And now, moving forward, you can run that command whenever you want. And each pass, it will only do something if you've just changed the Terraform manifest. Craig, I honestly can't believe it. With this Terraform script, I can deploy my entire Django app to Cloud Run in no time. This usually eats up my entire Saturday. Happy to help, Martin. Uh, but say, maybe next time, as a thank you, when we're playing Catan, you can uh, not play such hardball with me when I propose resource trades. You can't just expect me to offer you buy one, get one on my lumber whenever you need it.